Greetings again, friends. Well, today I am going to discuss how should I vote? Now, <clears throat> this is an important subject, and by the time you are looking at this video, there should be news about how the vote in the United States went. Because in the United States of America, we have a huge midterm election that's going to have repercussions for this whole country and really repercussions all over the world because of the influence of America on the economies of the world. Now, it is so important that you understand that you must vote according to the way God wants you to vote. Now, I understand that every person who is a government leader is going to have problems because really we're all broken and we none of us are perfect. But you will have to choose if you have opportunity to vote where you have uh, your government be. I know it's different in different places of the world, but many countries do have elections to some extent. And in America, where uh, we have the freest, uh, supposedly the freest country in the world, we have the opportunity to voice our vote for the people that will best represent us. And again, you have to determine how you should vote by what the people believe and or have a record of showing that they will support or not support. And this is where you get in trouble because so often in politics, especially if there's competition uh, in, in any area like there is for elections in most areas, you will have people saying one thing and doing something different when they get into a position of power. And that is frequently uh, the history that you see with political people when they get into power. Uh, <clears throat> you often do not have the promises kept that are promised when they are campaigning to get your vote. So how you should vote is very important. Now, if there was ever a clearer example and opportunity to know the issues that are important for God and should be for you who are watching. It is in this day when there is such a polarization of the ideas and beliefs of the two main parties in the United States. Now, this is important and these same philosophies and polarizations are taking place around the world in different ways in countries because there is the influence in the global economy and what has been called the new world order. But it is most seen and understood in the United States of America. And there are clearly two distinct philosophies represented by the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Now, you can go to a website and you can look at the platform of the Democratic Party and the platform of the Republican Party. And if you are a Bible-believing Christian, you cannot believe the way the Democratic platform says that they believe. So you would not be able to vote Democratic if you are a true Bible-believing Christian and you care about voting the way God says that we should live and have government be and how we can support his truth. So there are three things that I have thought about. Now, 
I did a video called, Did You Vote the Bible? And you should go and look at that video because that explains this a little more. This is similar, but it is coming on this midterm election where there really should be a great wave of red, which is represented by the Republican platform because their platform is one that is more in line with the Bible. Now, not every Republican is going to do what's right or good. Not every Democrat is going to be as bad as every other Democrat. But you are going to have a clearer choice than ever before because the Democratic Party has been, as many have called, radicalized. Now, some of this is of their own doing when they officially took God out of their party platform. And sadly, many people who call themselves Christians still support democratic people and, and, and being in power, even though they somehow miss the fact that they have abandoned God and any moral principles. I mean, they believe that there are uh, a whole myriad, maybe as many as 20 or so different genders. They don't believe in male and female, as the Bible clearly said God created them male and female. They believe in prejudice by teaching something called the critical race theory, CRT, that they are pushing in the school systems. They push drag queens to be in every school. This is what the leaders, the democratic leaders in the country now have officially said and passed laws to try to make happen. And of course, you could understand this uh, in the three things that I have talked about, which are life, law, and liberty. Life is one of the most important things to consider. And in this year, June 24th, to be exact, as I have done and talked about in videos, like the happy birthday video I did and the videos dealing with abortion, the Supreme Court in the U.S. overturned the abortion rights law, as it had been framed, which the Constitution of this country does not give that right to abortion because it is taking a human life. And it does not do that. Women have rights, men have rights, but a woman does not have right to take a unique individual that is forming in her body, and it is not her body. I've talked about this again. She does not have uh, the right uh, to take another life because it is distinct from her. It is not her body. It is a distinct body growing inside of her body, and that must be understood, and science clearly supports that. So again, go back and look at those things I've talked about in relation to abortion and life. But life is a key thing, and that is a key thing that should determine how you vote, because if a, if a politician does not support life from the very smallest conception of a baby, in the growth of the in the growth of the womb, then they're not going to support anybody's life but their own power and their life because they're self-centered and not thinking of others or supporting life. So don't buy into a lie if they say that they support you in a particular thing that you believe because because they're not going to support you unless it helps them and and it helps their life because if they don't support life in general, they'll only support their own life. Life is something God created and we do not want to try to take it or mess with it. And of course, you can see biblically when people have done that. Well, when angels tried to mess with life uh, in, in a place like Genesis 6 and that Jude refers to and other writings refer back to, we know that there were angels who sinned that got specific judgment when they messed with life as God had created. 
and we know that God has the right of life as the creator, and he does not want us to get involved in messing with it and thank and praise him that this crazy law that wasn't even a good law uh, is finally overturned and states now have the right to make decisions. But again, as I've mentioned before, there are some radical people in this country in positions of power that are trying to pass laws, especially in places like California and New York. They are passing laws to try to make abortion to be legal all the way through the pregnancy and even in the first days of a baby being alive out of the womb. We're talking infanticide that they support and believe. And it, this, is, this is lunacy. It is flat out murder. Uh, and, and it is something that is wanting to be passed by the Democratic leaders in Congress currently. They want to codify this in the law of the land. And so God help us if we ever went that way in the United States as a whole. So you need to know how to vote and you should consider life because that's one of the most important things. Now you should consider law. Law is important. What is government for but to keep law? I mean, we could go and look at different passages in the Bible and we can understand this because there's several places you can go that detail this. Uh, one of the most famous is Romans 13, which talks about being subject to governing authorities. But I want you to look at one particular verse here where it talks about uh, the rulers, the government leaders, and what they do. And it's verse 3, and it says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. And that is talking about how that rulers are supposed to help keep law, and help keep evil from coming uh, to more and more a, to be a part of a society. So they have to judge the evil. In verse 4, uh, it says, For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Okay, so government is supposed to have law, and it is supposed to restrain the evil that exists because of human, sinful human nature. And also, when it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, it is talking about this uh, a government being f to stop the evil, uh, for instance, 1 Peter 2, verse 14, which says, uh, or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. So Peter is saying you should be subject to the authority because they are intended to stop the evil but praise the good. Now, that doesn't always happen as it should, but law is important. And who respects the law? Now, we could talk about issues that make it clear, but what about the, the 5 million plus people that have come across the southern border of the United States illegally coming across because the government is in is not enforcing any of the laws uh, and they have allowed for an open border policy. That is lunacy because you have people from all over the world coming in, drugs flowing in, the cartels are getting rich. 
Um, I heard that their profits have gone up 2,500% uh, through this open border. Uh, imagine that kind of return uh, that you would get on any investment. They have gotten rich and wealthy because of the drugs that they push and using people. And I've seen where people have been killed, who have been smuggled in trailers, and, and the, it's just crazy the stuff that's happening at the border and Americans better wake up and understand that this is lawlessness this is lawlessness to allow these people in in the first place without a procedure the way that many come in legally uh, so America doesn't doesn't want to keep anyone from coming if they do so legally, but not illegally, and America should be a country that enforces law. But what are they even doing in talking about the Democratic Party is talking about no bail laws and defunding the police and all of the things they do that don't support law. Uh, even most of the big cities in America I saw a statistic that said 27 of the 30 big cities in America where crime exists are run by Democratic Party people. And so their policies are what are causing the lawlessness. So with this radicalization, you cannot vote for them if you claim to follow the Bible because they do not support law and righteousness. They support the opposite and they talk like they support those things, but they don't have policies that support them. So friend, I don't know what your background is or what your family has believed. If you're watching this in America, you can't vote Democratic if you're voting by the Bible. You have to support life, you have to support law, and you should support liberty. And of course, we understand liberty because Jesus Christ is the one who came into this world and set us free from the bondage of our sin. And a Christian should understand liberty better than anyone because we have been freed from those chains that bind us with the habits and all of the, the inroads that the, new, the old nature makes in, the, in your body as you live out those things. When you become a Christian, you get a new nature. When you trust in Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, that he was buried and rose from the grave, that gospel message says you get a new nature. You are, you are made alive in Christ, and you no longer have to be bound to those chains of sin. And liberty is something that is to be focused on why I'm even wearing what I am, what America has stood for, liberty and, and law and life. And that is, that is the three big things you should think about simply to just help you to understand how you should vote. If they don't support liberty, that is liberty for you being able to worship as that's the, the cornerstone of all liberty is religious liberty. I've discussed this some in different, uh, different videos that I've done, even dealing with the top 10 lessons to learn and respecting authority and how all those things play in there. But friends, this is important, and Peter even addressed this in that section of verses that I looked at before, because he says that when we have this liberty, uh, we are people that will live by law. And let me just share a couple of verses here. Uh, verse 15 said, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. But verse 16 there says, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, 
but as bondservants of God. So you are someone, as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are someone who has liberty from the power of sin, from the penalty of sin, and, and in the future from the presence of sin. That's another subject to discuss. But you are supposed to be people, as Peter says in verse 17, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. These are all things that are good things that are to be done by Christians. Okay, so how should you vote? You should vote for life. You should vote for law. You should vote for liberty. And you should vote in this election for people that are not going to be like the people in power have shown themselves to fully be in the radical democratic party that exists. The Republican platform is better. It includes God. It includes law. It includes liberty. It includes life. It is focusing on all these things. Not every Republican is going to be doing everything that's good, but that's the party platform. So we don't have much choice if those are the two parties that are represented. But if you're voting for someone who doesn't have that affiliation or a nonpartisan race, you should consider where the candidates stand on those three issues. Again, life, law, and liberty. Now, friends, if you don't think your vote makes a difference, oh, I'm telling you, this is something that aggravates me more than many things do because I see people who are Christians who sit back and don't get involved. They think it won't do any good. They think their vote doesn't count. I did a video on does one make a difference and you should look at that because historically we see that it has. And in an election this important, the one vote that you make in an area is making the difference. And it'll be people doing that and it might be decided in many areas by just a few votes or a few thousand votes in the scope of everything. So it is important that you vote. It is important that you be what God calls you to be, and that is salt and light in the world. So if you don't vote, now that's really why you should vote. I could do a whole video on that, because if you don't vote, you're saying that you don't care to do what God wants you to do. All right, so that's the way you ought to look at it. But how you should vote is to vote for the three ways that I said. Now, before concluding here, I want to just go and reference a couple of things in reference to the children of Israel, because this is a wonderful illustration of blessing and cursing. If you don't know this, you should go back and study it. But Deuteronomy 11.29 talks about how that uh, it was to be when God brought them into the land. And it says, Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Now that is a very interesting study of the two mounts. Mount Gerizim for the blessing and Mount Ebal for the cursing. And if you want to look at how this plays out, go to Deuteronomy chapter 27. Because in Deuteronomy 27, Moses had the people together by the tribes, some of them on Mount Gerizim and some on Mount Ebal, and they pronounced things that were curses that the people should not follow and blessings that you should do, commandments that you should follow. And basically, I'll just read the concluding one there, and it's Deuteronomy 27, 26, which says, Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of the law of this law by observing them, and all the people shall say amen. So that is a, a particularly interesting thing, that there is blessing and cursing. 
and this is something that is important to understand that plays out in elections also because if you uh, if you do not understand this in reference to elections then you won't understand that the the policies the decisions that leaders make have an effect that will either be a blessing or a cursing and we could go and talk about how even all people groan when the when the government is evil but they are glad when it's peaceful and there's liberty <sighs> friends you know how you should vote and you better get out and vote if you're seeing this before the polls close and if you're not make sure you Think about this for future elections as God would bring into your life and in your country where you are. Now, I will conclude with one final verse in Deuteronomy 30, 19. And it references this idea of life that I talked about again. But in conjunction with law and liberty, you have this as a summary as Moses was commanding and exhorting the people. And he said there in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Now, friends, that is a great summary verse for you to think when you consider, how should I vote? Like this video, share it with others, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll be ready for the next video as God leads. Thank you for watching and for voting. Mm -hmm.